Here comes the team. Jerry, welcome to the show. And, of course, you are well aware of our uh, visitor here today, the uh, world heavyweight champion, Nick Bockwinkle, whom you have met in a different versions on more than one occasion. Please, under gentlemen. Circum under the circumstances, I do feel, since it is for the world heavyweight championship, that I should stand up here so they can, you might say, make a visual comparison. Well, let me just say this. You know, I've been in the back. I've been watching on the monitor, and I've... I've been listening to Nick Bockwinkel's uh, commentary, if you want to call it that. And let me just say this, Nick. Um, listening to you is about as exciting as watching the grass grow. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, you are as dull and as droll as a human being can possibly be. And uh, I might add that uh, your ability in the ring somewhat exceeds your ability uh, to enunciate, but not by much. Well, uh, okay, Jerry. He finished, he finished grade school uh, down in this part of the country, didn't he? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I listen to you out here, and I think you try to impress people with all the big words and all the, uh, you know, the, the fine uh, manner of speech that you use, but all of that talking, all of that talking is not going to get you anywhere because, as you know, that when you step in the ring with me, you know, all that talk is not going to do you one bit of good. You're going to have to prove it right there in that ring, and, and that's what I've been waiting for for a long, long time. May, may I say that, first of all, if my big words seem to put you a little bit off-center, and if a lot of the fatuous, cretinous humanoids out there don't understand some of my big words, do understand one thing. I'm not talking to you or to your fans. I'm talking to my fans. My fans understand every bit of English I use, and the rhetoric that I give is for them, not for you and yours. Is that right? And well, then, I then understand you... that they have your fan club meeting in a phone booth down here on Union Avenue. Quality does not have to come in size, my boy. Uh -huh. And besides, as you just said, maybe I use a lot of words and that doesn't do the job in the ring. Let me just say that this thing here is emblematic. It is symbolical of the peak, the pinnacle, and the finest, the zenith in our sport today, the heavyweight championship of the world. So it does seem strange that this giant gold and silver diamond-studded license plate and my big words all do go together, don't they? No, well, let he me does just have say the this. Belt. Let me just say this. He does have the belt for the time being. But always remember this, Nick Bockwinkle. I've gone through a lot of tough contenders to get this shot at you. And I've got this shot at you. And I'm going to make the very best of it. Believe me, I'm going to start 1984 off with a bang. It's going to be the greatest year of my career because I'm going to enjoy wearing that big gold and silver diamond studded license plate, as you like to call it, because I'm going to leave the ring with it. I want you to make no mistake about that. And always remember this. I, and there are not many wrestlers that can say this, but I, Nick Bockwinkle, have beaten you, and you know it. And you also know that if I have beaten you once, I can and will beat you again. That's all I got to say. Tonight. Well, uh, Nick, uh, it's the truth. Jerry's in the, in the next bout here, so uh, he heads to the ring. And not to pressure a sore point, but he's telling the truth, Nick. He uh, d did, in fact, beat Nick Bockwinkle. Well, I watched, a few seconds ago, I watched the tape where Kearns beat Dundee. Now, if the rest of you fatuous humanoids out there didn't realize it, that maybe the one time that that man had a victory over me, it was the same as in that match where Mr. Kearns, I looked at the clock, I watched the referee, they were four-second counts. Why don't you introduce this match?